Well, hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. And once again, on behalf of Mark, Alice, and myself, we will greet you in the wonderful, the precious, the holy, the holy name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, we're continuing on in our study. That we Actually, we've been studying ministry mm -hmm. for the past few weeks. And this is still concerning ministry, okay? Yes. But we're, we're kind of moving, and we started talking last week about the price of following Jesus Christ and the power mm -hmm. that comes. But the price has to be paid in order to have the power. That's okay? right. So we're going to continue on in that because that is essential to any ministry. So we're, that's what we're going to do, and we're going to pick up, and we're going to be looking at where we left off last week. We were talking about this combination of faith, authority, and power. Mm -hmm. and that's where we're going to start, right after Mark asks God's blessing on our time together. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we just thank you for your word and our ability to study it. And, Lord, just let us rest in it after we find out what you have in store for us. Amen. Amen. All right. It says, and we talked, as I say, we talked about this is kind of where we closed off last week, that it says in Ecclesiastes that a three-stranded cord is not easily broken, all right? And you, and you know, if, if you've ever seen rope, when you see, a, if you have a single strand, it's easily broken. Right. But when you entwine three together, it's not easily broken. Yeah, it's and, it's strength. And if you look at a, a three-stranded cord, the interesting thing is, Basically, you know, look at that cord. You can't tell which is which, right? Because they, in a intertwine. sense, they intertwine and they basically become one. one thing, all right? And that is ever so true when it comes to what we're looking at right now. And it has to do with, it has to do with ministry. And as I said, every believer has ministry, okay? Mm -hmm. So, we're looking at faith, authority, and power. Those are the three things. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, it says, "Whatever was born, whatever is born of God, overcomes the world." And this is the victory that has overcome the world: our faith. It's First John five four. Mm -hmm. And then Matthew twenty eight eighteen, it says, "And Jesus came up and spoke to them." And saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And of course, he gave the disciples authority. Mm -hmm. And then Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, For the kingdom of God does not consist in words, but in power. Okay? Yes. So there you have the three things, faith, authority, and power. And as we've talked about a lot, and I'm going to talk about it one more time at least, God never calls you to do something that he doesn't equip you for. I mean, this is the purpose of, of that fivefold ministry, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, is to equip the saints for the work of service. Or as you said before, ministry. Because our, all ministry is about serving. serving. First of all, serving God, all right? So that's to be equipped for the work of service, get the gifts that come from God. Mm -hmm. And it's Paul, you know... Uh, wrote in 1 Corinthians again in chapter 4 and he said for who regards you as superior what do you have that you did not receive and if you did receive it why do you boast as if you had not received it God equips you for what he calls you for he gives it to you you didn't earn it you didn't do it on your own it's not your own your own power that you are equipped for ministry <clears throat> it's one of the problems that we have in the church today is that so many ministries seem to be based on the quote-unquote power of a single personality. Mm -hmm. So God has given us faith. For through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment, as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. Romans 12, 3. Every Christian has faith. God has given them, allotted them, a measure of faith, right? He's given us authority. Jesus said in Luke 10, verse 19, he said, Behold, I have given you authority. 
to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will injure you. He has given us power. Paul wrote to Timothy again, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and a sound mind, discipline. So you, you see the three God has given us. If the three things are essential and they are intertwined, faith, authority, and power, God has given us all three. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. He's already given every believer that. You don't get that by going to a seminary. You don't get that by going to a Bible school. You get it because it's God's gift to you to make sure that you have, that you are equipped for ministry. It's a package deal. <laughs> well, it is. Now, you know, he, the, the, the specifics of the ministry that he calls you to, that's different. Mm -hmm. But everybody is called to ministry, and no ministry can survive, can exist, without those three things. That's right. Or if it does, it's going to be a disaster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's true. Now, I want to put those together. I want to, as I said, connect the dots. In Matthew chapter 8, I'm going to read verses 5 through 10. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, imploring him, and saying, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, fearfully tormented. Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion said, Lord, I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority with soldiers under me, and I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and he does it. Now when Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who were following, truly I say to you, I have not found such great faith with anyone in Israel. Has, a man with authority. Well, has, has God ever marveled at your faith? If he hasn't, why? And the question becomes why, yeah. right? Well, one of the reasons there was because this is a centurion. This is a Roman soldier. And, you know, a centurion has great power. Here's a man who comes to, an, uh, and I'm putting quotes around this, an itinerant Jewish preacher, right? A, a Jewish carpenter. And here is this powerful Roman commander, and he comes to Jesus and calls him Lord. This is a man filled with humility. Yes. Okay. He said, I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. I, I promise you that anything in your relationship with God had better be founded on your humility. Because he must be the Lord in your life. I've, I've said this, and I, I don't want to over beat this, but it's good if you haven't heard this. I mean, stop and think about it. When you think of people in Israel... In biblical times, it had great faith. Who do you think of? Did you ever think of the centurion? I mean, you may think of Abraham. You may think of Paul. You may think of whoever you may think of. But Jesus said he hadn't found such great faith in all of Israel as he did with the centurion. Why? Because the centurion understood authority. He understood authority. He understood that Jesus was a man who had authority. But I think it's really neat that he says, I also am a man under authority. So he recognized that Jesus was under authority. You realize that? Yes, yeah. Because Jesus was totally under authority, under the authority of the Father. Mm -hmm. he, he said nothing that he hadn't heard the Father say to him. He did nothing that the Father had not told him to do, shown him to do, right? Mm -hmm. So you, if you're going to exercise authority, if you're going to walk in authority, you had, be, you had better be submitted to authority, the authority of the Lord God. So that resulted in, and Jesus said to the centurion, go your way, let it be done to you as you have believed. And the servant was healed that very hour. The end result of this is power. And it is the power of God's word, right? So it starts with faith. So let's look at that first, right? It has to come first. It comes from faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It comes by getting instructions from God. Right? 
Yes. Anything that you're going to do, it better be because you have heard God tell you to do it. Because that's how Jesus operated. He didn't do anything. And, and as it says in Romans 14, whatever is not from faith is sin. Right. It says the same thing in Hebrews 11, right? 11, 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. So this is why you can't lean on your own understanding. And I, we talked about this a little bit last week. We got into it a little bit. There's a tremendous difference between faith and positive thinking. Positive thinking is what you can think of and start to confess it or speak it or try to do it. Mm -hmm. And boy, I can get you in all kinds of trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, and it seems to me that there's a lot. In the, in the natural, in the world, so much has been written about positive, a positive attitude, a PMA, a positive mental attitude, or positive thinking, right? I mean, there are still seminars, and it's taught in the church so much. The greatest example of positive thinking is the devil. Yes. I will ascend to heaven. I will make my throne. I will make myself like the most high God. I will, I will, I will. And God says, oh, no, you won't. Mm -mm. No, no, no. We, we don't have the power to do anything that God has not called us to, that God has not given us the authority to do. Yes, that's correct. You need to understand that, all right? If the, if the Lord didn't tell you to do something or that he wants you to do it, you have no authority to do it. And if you don't have authority, you may still have power. And to use it becomes a crime, becomes a sin. Can you see that? And that became... Without uh, faith. You know, I, I use the analogy, I think, not long ago. It's like, if you go into the military... They may, early on, they may hand you a gun, a, a weapon, right? That, that, that's a, a weapon is power. Yes, it is. But, but dare not use it without authority. Dare not use it on your own understanding. You can't, that doesn't give you permission to go out and start shooting things, right? You have to be operating under authority. Otherwise, it's not power. It is lawlessness, Okay. Think, think about this. I think this is a great example in Scripture. So this, this is an example, and it's a warning, that if you're not a true disciple of Jesus Christ, if you are not operating by faith, under authority, and you're trying to exercise power, listen to this. Mm -hmm. Consider the example of the seven sons of Sceva. In Acts 19, 11, 11 through 16, it says this. God was performing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul, so that handkerchiefs or aprons were even carried from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out. But also, some of the Jewish exorcists who went from place to place attempted to name over those who had the evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, I adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. Seven sons of one Sceva, a Jewish chief priest were doing this. And the evil spirit answered and said to them, I recognize Jesus, and I know about Paul, but who are you? And the man in whom was the evil spirit leaped on them and subdued all of them and overpowered them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. They had not been given authority. You have the right to use the power. They did not. Okay? Many will say to me on that day, Jesus said at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Matthew seven twenty two. So they were out. They were using power. Mm -hmm. They were yeah, using... But not from God. Well, they were using power. You know what the reward was? God said, Jesus said, depart from me. I never knew you. You who practice lawlessness. It was illegal. Yeah. It was unlawful for them, those seven sons of Sceva, to exercise power that they and the people that come to Jesus and then saying that. Mm -hmm. In their pride, they had no authority to use to that power. Remember this conversation started looking at the humility of the source of both the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. That's what we started last week talking about, right? In Philippians chapter 2. Right. He humbled himself. Humbled himself even to the point of death. Death on a cross. 
So how do I know that these people who come to Jesus in Matthew 7 don't have humility? Well, it's easy. They came into the presence of the King of Kings. They came into the presence of the Lord of Lords, who was there to welcome him with his outstretched arms and nail-scarred hands. And they said, look what I did. How can you come into the physical presence of Jesus Christ and say, look what I did? You had to fall on your face and thank him for what he did. Authority provides the power to serve. Okay? You can have power, but if you don't have authority... You're acting illegally. You're acting illegally. You know, here in the world we have today, and I'm not, I'm not a political guy and I don't want to get into too much politics, but I think one of the single most important issues that is going on in the world around us right now is North Korea. Mm -hmm. They have power. Mm -hmm. They have developed nuclear weapons. That's power. What else? I mean, there's not much more powerful than that on the face of the earth, right? Mm -hmm. But they didn't have authority to do it because there, there are rules that have been put in place that, that you know, uh, set out how, how you can have nuclear weapons, what they can be done, and they don't do it. So he, is he dangerous? Very. I, I, he's, he, you can't even begin to think of how dangerous he is. Mm -hmm. I mean, he has, he may very well have the world on the brink of nuclear war. Mm -hmm. Okay? Is he operating because God told him to do that? I doubt it. No. Because God isn't going to tell you to do anything Ill illegal. No, he's not. And Jesus came to bring life. It is Satan who comes to bring death. death. And destruction. But that doesn't mean that he could not use the power that he has. Mm -hmm. He just doesn't have authority to do it. So, it's all about authority that leads. Now, that authority has to come from faith, all right? Mm -hmm. you, you know that you have authority because Jesus told you. He told you what you can do, what you can't do. Right. Faith comes by hearing, mm -hmm. all right? So, when you hear God, you know what authority you have. Jesus called his disciples called him to himself, and he said, I'm reading from Matthew 20, verses 25 to 28. You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. It is not this way among you, but whoever wishes to become great among you shall be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just as a son of man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Authority gives you the power to serve. There was a gent in Britain, I'm not quite sure how long ago, probably, I'm not quite sure, probably in the mid-1800s, his name was Lord Acton. Ever hear Lord Acton? Mm -hmm. Lord Acton said that power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Well, he's true because he's talking about worldly power mm -hmm. that did not come from the source of all power. Authority flows from the top down. The only person that's not under authority <clears throat> is God the Father. Well, he, because he is the authority. He is. The, he's the author. He's the author. He's the author. The word yeah, authority and author is. come. You know. Okay. So he has all authority. He. He, he's not under authority. He is. He is. His name. Is, I am. I am. That I am. He is. Um, power corrupts when it is. Why? Because if it's coming from the world and you didn't hear it from God, it's not based on humility. Yeah. The reason it corrupts is because people are looking to be exalted. They're being, looking to be, it's, you know, it's the opposite. It's a, it's a tool of pride. Mm -hmm. But when you have power... That comes from operating under the authority of God in order to serve. Isn't that what Jesus said? We read it, right? He came not to be served, but to serve. All of this, the faith, the power, or the authority, they are intertwined so you can't tell them apart, but their purpose is to serve, and first and foremost to serve God. And obedience brings the humility. Well, because if you're not obeying and you want to do it your own way, that's your pride. But if you don't listen to him, if you don't hear his voice, you're not going to, what's there to, to obey? Mm -hmm. 
you're you're you know you're out there on your own, so to speak, right? So, and even in, as Christians, sometimes I mean we have we have trouble dealing with the authority of God because we don't agree with it. Well, you're not submitting them. Uh huh. <laughs> to submit means to place your will under somebody else's. Mm -hmm. Did Jesus not say, "Not my will, but Thy will be done"? Yes. So if you're operating in the natural, you're not gonna you're not gonna be in the right place with God because think think about um, I, two instances came to my mind. Okay. On, on at the Last Supper, the night before Jesus yes. was taken, right? It says in John 13 that Jesus got up from the supper, laid aside his garments, and taking a towel, he girded himself. Then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel with which he was girded. So he came to Simon Peter and he said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? And Jesus answered and said to him, What I do you do not realize now, but you will understand hereafter. And Peter said to him, Never shall you wash my feet. Peter answered him, Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, then wash not only my feet, but also my hands and head. Do all of me, Lord. Do you not think that it took the power of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. for Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords, the King of Glory, to kneel down and wash the feet? I mean, that's a lowly task. Mm -hmm. And then in Matthew 16, he said, I also say to you that you are Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. Then he warned the disciples that they should tell no one that he was the Christ. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and raised up on the third day. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are not setting your mind on God's interests, but on man's. Can you relate to that? Mm. Because he, you know, he didn't want that to be. No, of course not. He said, this can't be. How could this be? <laughs> but Jesus was submitted to the will of the Father. Yes. You see, practically everywhere I go in the West, and I, I'm speaking in generalities, but anyway, I mean the West, I'm talking about Europe, I'm talking about the UK, I'm talking about here in the United States. I hear so many Christians asking today, where's the power? Yeah. But the real question might be, where's the understanding of authority? Paul wrote in Romans 13, and he said, Every person is to be in subjection to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And those which exist are established by God. Therefore, whoever resists authority has opposed the ordinance of God, and they who have opposed will receive condemnation upon themselves. Authority comes from the top down. Is that not what Jesus said to Pontius Pilate? Yes. Yes. Said so you'd have no authority except my father gave it to you, right? So the, the government has authority, God given authority to do things, mm -hmm. to protect us from evildoers. Evil right? yes. But they have, part of that is uh, they set speed limits on the highway, right? They want you to pay taxes, they set parking rules. Mm -hmm. I want you to stop at a red light. <laughs> all of those things are things that we are to submit to so and by the way Paul's words were written during the time of Nero and Nero was one of the most terrible rulers of that, that ever lived I mean he used to light the night sky with burning Christians right? and yet Peter is saying be, or Paul is saying be submissive to him Peter does say it too, right? Yes. So, it says in Luke 16, He who is faithful in a very little thing is faithful, faithful also in much. 
And he who is unrighteous in a very little thing is unrighteous also in much. So if you're being not being obedient in the little things, the speed limits, the parking laws, why do you think God would trust you in the big things? He won't. Well, he said he would. that's something really to think about. I mean, I, you know, I'm not trying to sound judgmental. But when I'm driving down the highway at the speed limit, which is rare for, you know, to me and see anybody doing the speed limit on the roads around here, and I see a car go by me, literally, at 25, 30 miles an hour faster than me, over the speed limit, and they have a little bumper sticker that says, honk if you love Jesus, or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I think to myself, really, you know, do they, do they really understand? Rebellion is as witchcraft. Mm -hmm. That's what God spoke through the prophet Samuel to King Saul. Saul lost his ministry. Saul lost his authority and power because he rejected God's authority. His rebellion led him to further go astray, even in greater depths of spiritual depravity when he turned to the witch of Endor. That's what happened. It's progressive. You know, our, our life is progressive. We are being brought from glory to glory. We're being transformed, brought from glory to glory. Mm -hmm. We're being conformed into the image of his son, Christ Jesus. God, the father, is the, the potter is changing us, molding us and shaping us. But if you are not working under that faith, authority, and power, you know what's happening? You're being, you're being changed by the world. Yes. And you will become more depraved day by day mm -hmm. by day. You will become farther and farther away from the Lord day by day. Okay. I don't get too much. One, because one of the things I, I want to get to here, because this is what's so important in relationship to ministry, is that when you have... When you are operating into the power that came from listening to the Lord and working under his authority, when you are exercising that power, the power of the Holy Spirit, that will change the way you look at things. That's perspective. That's right. Paul's view of everything prior to his encounter with Christ was religious. Right? Think about what he said in Philippians chapter 3, starting in verse 4. Although I myself might have confidence even in the flesh, if anyone else has a mind to put confidence in the flesh, I far more. Circumcised the eighth day of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, of a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to the righteousness which is in the law, found blameless. How? That's what changed. His outlook, all of a sudden, it wasn't about religion. It was about relationship. It was about his relationship with the Lord. That's what the reason for this is, is that you walk as a child of God, all right? And we're not going to get into that this week. Mm. But do be back next week so we can talk about this. I want to talk about how that faith, authority, and power changes the way you see everything. And everything becomes an opportunity for God to work and manifest His glory in you. So, Father, we just thank you for that. We thank you, Lord God, that we can be witnesses to your power, witnesses to your love, witnesses to your glory. We praise you and thank you that you have given us everything that we need. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Yeah.